Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-black Ashiok control deck featuring three copies of Ashiok Nightmare Muse from Thirst Beyond Death, 5 mana for a 5 loyalty planeswalker, the plus 1 making a 2-3 blue and black nightmare creature token that says whenever this creature attacks or blocks, each opponent exiles the top 2 cards of their library, the minus 3 kind of acts as a removal spell, returning target non-land permanent to its owner's hand, and then that player also has to exile a card from their hand, and the minus 7 ultimate, it says we can cast up to three face-up cards your opponents own from exile without paying their mana cost. That even includes potential adventure creatures in adventure land, but we're mostly going to be casting cards that we exiled using our 2-3 nightmare tokens, so Ashok makes for a nice finisher in this deck. Otherwise, we've got a pretty stock blue-black control deck. We've got some hand disruption at 2 mana with Thought Erasure, some cheap removal with Tyrant's Scorn, some counter spells with Thassa's Intervention and Sinister Sabotage, Intervention also doubling up as a bit of card draw. We've got some adventure creatures of our own with Murderous Rider to destroy creatures or planeswalkers, and Brazen Borrower giving us some instant speed interaction. Then at 4 mana we've got Chemist's Insight to draw some cards, the Jumpstart can help us discard cards we don't need in certain matchups. To eat to extinction as more removal that also exiles a creature or planeswalker, so especially nice against recursive creatures like Uro from the new set. And then we have the full playset of Ritual of Soot. Now this will be a dead card in some matchups, but in other matchups is the only thing that's gonna keep us alive to help us keep the board clear. And then we've got our three copies of Ashok and two copies of Lockmere Serpent as another finisher that we can flash in so it plays well alongside our counter spells. And then going over the mana base, we have a total of 27 lands, since we don't really want to miss any land drops, including plenty of dual lands for Fable Passage to search up Swamper Island, especially nice with the Mystic Sanctuary, where we have one copy which uh, wants to have lots of islands in play to come into play untapped and return an instant or sorcery from our graveyard back on top of our deck. And then we've got one of each castle, Castle Ventress for a bit of scry, and Castle Lockthwain to maybe draw some additional cards if we're empty-handed. And then uh, Temple of Deceit, also a nice new addition from Theros, as well as a Watery Grave counting as an island for our Mystic Sanctuary as well. And then we'll be playing some best of three today. In the sideboard we have two copies of Duress as some more discard against the combo and control decks. Aether Gusts, pretty versatile sideboard card as well. Epic Downfall, mainly a nod to Annex from the Mono Red decks, being able to exile that creature and not leave any satyrs behind is pretty important. Two copies of Noxious Grasp as another versatile removal spell. Four copies of Mystical Dispute, mainly against the blue decks with the Fairy. And then uh, two copies of Fiery Castle Libation, which I'm also trying out. Seems like a pretty versatile answer as it can get rid of enchantments like Wilderness Reclamation and the Fires of Invention, and then it can also potentially deal with a Dream Trawler, which is otherwise difficult to answer once it hits the battlefield. And then two copies of Thief of Sanity. Don't think this is particularly great, since most of the blue decks will be sideboarding in cards like Mystical Dispute that still counter the Thief of Sanity, but it just seems like a, a nice, fun sideboard card to maybe bring in when people take out most of their removal spells after sideboard. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Can play the castle turn one, swamp turn two, to give us access to a thought erasure facing Temple of Mystery. Could still be a lot of different decks. Opponent with Island Pass, so it could be a blue-green flash deck. Yeah, let's see what they are working with here. Gonna see a Gross Barrel. And Overgrown Tomb, alright, so Sultai, Double Paradise Druid, Nissa Voracious Hydra. Nissa definitely the scariest card here. Ritual of Soot, a nice way to deal with Paradise Druids as well. And then... I kinda wanna hit my land drops, but we already have up to 5 here, so I don't think I need to keep Temple. And against Double Paradise Druids, I will happily end up uh, casting the Ritual of Soot. Probably worth it to take two just to keep up uh, Sabotage. But most likely I'm not gonna do anything here. I 
I guess I could also bounce with Brazen Borrower just to make them replay it. Nah. I'll take four. Opponent passes. And then I'll just untap. Play a Ritual. Fetch another island here. And then even if they resolve a Nissa, we'll have a Murder Strider to deal with it. It's gonna be an Uro instead. So how many cards in graveyards? Next turn they can escape, so definitely wanna try and counter that so they don't draw the card. And then we're just looking for a finisher here. Ashok or Lokmir Serpent would be great. So we'll be able to sabotage Uro. And it's gonna take a while for the graveyard to fill up again. And yeah, there's a Serpent, perfect. Ah, they're just gonna play a small Hydra. Which we might even be able to ambush with the Serpents. And this is where we start turning the corner. Could also draw some cards with the Serpent, but... I'm happy keeping all my lands in hands. Can maybe flash in a Borrower or just... Scry with Castle Ventress. That's fine. Questing Beasts. I guess I'm happy to bounce with the Brazen Borrower since I'm gonna want to play the Brazen Borrower anyway. So might as well uh, make them spend the mana again. Don't need Ritual, even though it does also deal with Uro. And next turn we can just make the Lockmere Serpent unblockable, and that should be game over. No need to show them the Murder Strider here. on tap, activates. Alright, sweet. So pretty straightforward game one. Up against Sultai, so what can we expect my opponent to bring in? Bunch of uh, sideboard cards like Mystical Dispute perhaps. Maybe some discard effects as well. Don't love the Thief of Sanity if they keep in a card like Voracious Hydra, that can take it out pretty easily. Uh, Libation's not for this matchup, Grasp seems quite good. Epic Downfall seems okay, since it exiles Uro, gets rid of a Questing Beast. And then Aether Gust is probably fine too. And what do we take out? Tyrant's Corn can probably go. Even though it kills Uro, I would rather exile it. And... Probably don't need four copies of Ritual of Soot, go down to two. And... Maybe shave a Brazen Borrower, it's not super important in the matchup, I don't think. Could even cut some more and make room for... Maybe the Thief of Sanity anyway, just to try it out. Opponent could also be playing Casualties of War, in which case I don't want to present too many creatures. I guess we'll try... Maybe on the play I want Thief, but on the draw I'll keep the Brazen Borrowers. Yeah, I guess I can buy that, so if there's a game 3, I'll maybe try out Thief on the play. Alright, let's uh, try this. Alright, a reasonable hand here. Could 
could have also considered playing the Fabled Passage in case I don't find another land, so at least the third land comes into play untapped. But I'm kind of counting on finding another untapped land at some point. So this is probably another Gross Spiral for my opponents. And Playcrafter, sure. I guess I can take Uro. Don't really care too much about the Playcrafter. And Ashok. I don't think I want to keep Ashok since I kind of need to hit my land drops and I already have a Serpent in hand. It's close, like I could see keeping it, but I would rather just find a land here. Alright, Questing Beasts. It's pretty scary. Uh, I did find a land, so I can murder Strider it, which seems fine here. Otherwise, I could have played Sanctuary Tapped and bounced it. And we know there's no Nissa coming up, so don't need to save the Murder Strider for that. And then next turn I have the option of just playing Murder Strider. I could play a Chemist's Insight, maybe. Ponon does have a lot of lands, so if they have something like Hydroid Crisis coming up, we could be in trouble. Don't have any Narsets in the sideboard, since we have so many adventure creatures that Narset doesn't find. So... I guess I'm happy fetching an island here. I'll just do it now. And then uh, probably gonna inside end of turn. That's fine. I could inside in response. Maybe I should just to give me a bit more info on what to discard here. All right. Island seems fine. The downside of tapping out here is that we tell our opponents that they can resolve whatever they want. But we didn't have any counter spells in hand anyway. Right, so they will be able to escape Uro. But Brazen Borrowers reasonably effective against it. As bouncing Uro means they will need to escape again to get the 6-6 six -six creature. Which uh, is not too easy here. Nothing I really want to get back with the Sanctuary yet, so we'll wait for that. And then, um, I mean, Lockmere Serpent also lines up quite well against Uro if we get to 6 mana. But I think I would rather bounce it here. Alright, there's a Crisis, that's what I was concerned about. And uh, yeah, one card in the sideboard that could help against Krasis is the new counter spell that counters both the spell and any abilities on the stack. So that's something to keep in mind. I think Whirlwind Denial is what it's called. Yeah, I'm probably still going to counter the creature half. So they still draw three. And um, probably just play a swamp for now. And then I can flash in a serpent. I won't be ambushing any creature. But I kind of want to start closing out the game before they find another crisis. Alright, another Uro. Still not too many cards in graveyards. That's fine.
Do we see removal? Alright, Murder Strider. Now the Serpent can also mess with the opponent's graveyard here. Exiling five cards from the opponent's graveyards. Currently only three, but uh, Ashiok, pretty good top deck here, and they just use their Murder Strider. So, yeah, let's go for it. And then, I guess, putting a Thassa's Intervention back on top is fine. As it gives us the split mode of a counter spell or a card draw spell. So can't go too wrong with it. Ooh, Casualties of War, that's painful. Could have maybe waited to um, play Ashok until we had a counter spell in hand, but um, yeah, took a bit of a risk there. So now what? I could just play Murder Strider, and then if I pay two with the Watery Grave, I could just cast Intervention to draw two essentially. No real point in jump starting the insights. Would rather discard land. And then I kind of want the point to end up with another card in Graveyard, so we can exile those Uros. Back-to-back -back casualties. And opponent has enough mana to pay for the Thassa's Intervention. Alright, I guess we'll just draw two here. And then put those in hand. And then, yeah, they can't escape Uru now, so we'll be able to exile both with the Serpents. Thought Erasure not too useful. I guess I can downfall the Rider and then grasp the Paradise Druids. I don't think I can take a hit for four, because then the Serpent might not be enough to stabilize. So I probably need to get rid of one of these two. Probably just downfall the Rider and then keep Grasp in case of a Nissa or a Krasis later. And I think I just cast a Thought Erasure to Surveil to improve my draw step. Although if they top deck Krasis they will end up with a bunch of cards in hand and then Thought Erasure could still be useful. Yeah, I guess I'll just pass. I can maybe discard it to the Jumpstart on Chemisters. And if they top deck Questing Beast I can still Noxious Grasp. So I'm not dead. Yeah, I think I take two. Another Uro. Sure. So we'll be able to replay Serpent here. Probably still want to play out a couple lands. So the Paradise Roots no longer gets to attack me. And our opponents in top deck modes, hoping they don't find another crisis, because that's probably game over. And Druid attacks, so they must have top decked the Murder Strider then, which I could clear with the Thought Erasure first. So do I then cast a Grasp? I guess so. And then I can untap, cast Thought Erasure. So I don't want to jumpstart insights. Wow, they just drew another druid, so they just bluffed that attack. Eh. So I guess now I can jumpstart discarding Thought Erasure. Probably could have fetched first to thin out the deck a little bit. Don't know if we scryed anything to the bottom. And then I want more swamps to feed to the Lockmere Serpent here. So I'm probably still fine playing out lands. Uh-oh, opponents may be counting their mana. It's not a good sign. Well, I think now I'm kind of forced to do this. I 
fool me once. This looks like a giant crisis. Yeah, x equals 10, draw 5. Like, I can let the trigger resolve and then bounce it. Or I guess I can Aether Gust now. And then Thought Erasure if they redraw the crisis here. It's probably better. Although they could easily draw into another one. Back up Serpents. Yeah, they had another crisis. So I get to take one. And then I probably need to just activate Serpents, try and draw into another discard spell here. Not quite good enough, I didn't think. Let's see, I mean, I could also just play Double Serpent, but they can kill one of them. Yeah, they're gonna be able to get Uro back from the Graveyard 2 next turn, so even dealing with Karasis still leaves Uro. But I think I'm just kind of forced to do this. Sack a Swamp, maybe draw into another discard spell. Temple, I guess we'll Scry. Another Murder Strider to the bottom. Can counter the Crisis, but that's not ideal. But I guess we're out of options. and reaching for their graveyard, maybe going for Uro first. Which I can sabotage. And a third casualties of war. I guess I'll sacrifice the warrior grave here. So I'm kind of surprised they targeted that one. And then next turn we're gonna see a giant Hydroid Crisis. Alright, never mind. Opponent's playing it safe here. Crisis for three. Fearing another discard spell. But I'm pretty happy with that exchange. Can even block it with a Brazen Borrower. Soul Pass. Questing Beasts. That's probably worth countering. I could eat to Extinction too, but then I wouldn't be able to Brazen Borrower. So let's just sabotage it. And of course I can also Death Sprout my Brazen Borrower. So it's not a reliable blocker. And then do I want another one? I don't think so. So three cards in Graveyards. This kind of prompts the Death Sprout. So then we have E2 Extinction to deal with Krasis, and then no removal for the Serpents, which is going to try and take over. I guess I'll wait to E2 Extinction in case they play another Questing Beast, maybe. Right. Well, I can exile their Graveyard now to get rid of Uro. Opponents out of uh, searchable lands and Murder Strider probably keeps that one now. And all right, opponent scoops it up. So yeah, surprised they ended up not waiting on the Hydroid Crisis there because it definitely could have drawn way more cards. 
and we would have been in trouble, but I guess it worked out. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a one lander. This is better. And then the most situational cards here is probably Ritual of Soot. Although if we are up against an aggro deck, it's one of our most important cards. I think I still bottom it, and this deck is pretty mana hungry, so bottoming lands is usually not the best idea. Temple of Abandon. Red green could also be Teamer. Alright, looks like Gruel Aggro. We'll just take the only creature. And Murder Strider's pretty good in this matchup. Rimrock Knight, sure. I'll probably end up just using the Murder Strider here. Right, Phoenix of Ash, do we want to kill that instead? Yeah, I guess so. And then we can just play the Murder Strider to trade for the Rimrock Knights. Although that opens up the Domri's Ambush. But then they won't have the Domri's Ambush to deal with my Ashiok. So I think that's fine. And this Fable Passage is going to grab an island. And wait for the Murder Strider to die so we can shuffle it back into the deck since I wouldn't mind redrawing it. And then... They need one more card in Graveyard before they can escape Phoenix of Ash. So I think I'm down. Just uh, grab another island here in case of Sanctuary. Play Ashok. Make a token. And if they do manage to escape the Phoenix, we can maybe use a Murder Strider on it. So they could escape its second main if the Rimrock Knight ends up trading. Always want to take a look at which cards we exiled with the Nightmares in case we end up ultimating Ashiok. Right, they're gonna stomp Ashiok. Play Giants. Now I could minus Ashok and then Thought Erasure taking the Giants, maybe that's the line, and then Murder Strider can deal with the Phoenix. Because if I make a 2-3 here, it's just going to be chum blocking, which is not ideal. And a Brazen Borer seems fine. And hopefully we get to keep our Ashok. Innkeeper, definitely a pretty big threat. This is on cast, but it's only one mana, so bouncing it preemptively doesn't seem like the best solution. I think I keep Brazen Borrower to maybe bounce the Phoenix or some other card. And 
then looking for maybe a counter spell, maybe an answer for the innkeeper. Definitely should have started by plussing Ashok, but if they had a stomp, they probably would have used it already. Exiled. I guess there's a bunch of cards in exile here. Because of escapes, Ashok kind of synergizes with the opponent's escape creatures as well. Just a temple. And our opponent packs it in. Alright. So we got game one against the Gruul. Want to bring in the Noxious Grasps. Downfall, nice answer to the Phoenix as well. Ether Gusts. Don't think I want anything else. And then what do we take out? And don't love the Brazen Borrower here. So that can easily come out. Ritual seems fine. So I think we just cut all the Brazen Borrowers. And probably want to shave some number of counter spells as well. So between Sabotage and Intervention... Maybe cut a Sabotage since we can also use this as a card draw spell in case it doesn't line up as a counter spell. Gonna have to mulligan this one. This is better. And then probably bottom an island here. Passage can fetch another black source. Ether gusts. Yeah, I guess I'll keep it. Innkeeper, I'm definitely just gonna noxious grasp here before they do anything with it. Spellbreaker, I have to Aether Gust now. Otherwise, it's going to be Hexproof in their turn. Or I could take four to keep up a counter spell. Uh, what can they play next turn that's scary? I mean, a number of cards. I think I'm just going to Aether Gust this now and then play a tap to Argo Grave. Put and does put it back on top. Clothus. It's not the end of the world. So now we'll just play this tapped and uh, keep up Sabotage. Although Clothus is somewhat difficult for us to remove. Have to wait for it to become a creature and then exile it. So we side it out with Brazen Borrowers so can't bounce it as easily. There's a eat to extinction. End of turn can scry with castle if we don't need to eat. Alright, that's fine. Can exile the token next turn maybe. Might be able to ambush it with a Lockmere Serpent, which the opponent hasn't seen yet. Ashok seems nice. So is Thought Erasure. Thought Erasure I can play with Eat in the same turn. I mean, Thought Erasure plus Ashok is also kind of a combo. I guess with the Fabled Passage, I'll end up shuffling. Hmm. Uh, I'll keep the Ashok and then probably just shuffle away the Thought Erasure here. Opponent's going to make a mana with Clothus. And hopefully this works out. I 
guess they could cleave me, but I would still trade. Also, probably should have thought about getting a swamp in case we end up sacrificing it to the Lockmere Serpents. Alright, that works. And our opponent passes, so that's great. Let's take a look. Double Domri's Ambush, not too effective, and I'll keep a Murder Strider. So now we're just racing Clothis, which should not be too difficult. And yeah, put on packs it in. Alright, managed to beat Gruul, on to the next one. Alright, I guess we'll keep this. And then... I'm tempted to just bottom the Tyrant score, even though it's our cheapest card. Since Ormana does come into play somewhat tapped. And then I might just want a Ritual of Soot to catch back up. And not bother with the Tyrant Scorn. So I can maybe keep up Sabotage on 3. And a Ritual of Soot on 4. Don't love seeing the Cauldron Familiar, since the uh, Witch's Oven is pretty hard for us to deal with. Keep Temple. But no Witch's Oven for now. Don't need Serpents, already have double Ashok here as our finisher. Strider, so... Could be Mono Black. Let's have a look. Take Shepherds, and don't need another Ritual. Alright, so I might end up casting the Ritual next turn. Could also leave up Sinister Sabotage, and then hope to get Land 5 for Ashiok, which kind of deals with the uh, Strider. It's a close call here. I guess I'll just ritual. They do get to sag the familiar and scry. But then Ashok can maybe just minus to deal with their next threat. Alright, there's a witch's oven. Could Ashok a minus on the oven, although they still have one extra card in hand they can discard. So probably not worth it yet. There is little creeping, thieving Grey merchants. Okay, I kind of like the idea of minusing on the oven now. since there's no easy way for us to get rid of it otherwise. And then we'll fetch up an island here, I think, in case of the uh, Sanctuary. And then I could keep up Sabotage in case they picked up a Murder Strider here. But we've got another Ashok, so I don't think I care. And we'll keep the Intervention on top. Among us. And 
and don't feel too inclined to attack yet. It's going to be another Strider. That's fine. I want to keep our counter spells for scarier cards like maybe another Nightmare Shepherd. So I could just fire off uh, an intervention for five here. Don't hit it. And then we'll keep Chemisters. And then Ritual of Sid doesn't do me a whole lot of good. So probably better off with the land. And then I don't want to shuffle these back into my deck. So I'll just take a Swamp. I could consider attacking with the Nightmare here, just to start exiling some cards. I'll play safe, Protector Ashiok. One card that could be scary if they resolve it is something like a Bolas Citadel. So definitely want to keep up a Counterspell during their main phase at all times. But I don't care too much if they have a Murder Strider to kill my Ashiok. Could have also ended up uh, playing the Brazen Borrower here to start applying some pressure. I guess I'll get in some attacks here. But this game seems pretty much over. Now Yara does represent quite a bit of damage. But we can maybe just exile her or bounce her. E to Extinction, a little bit better if it's used on the escape creature here. Also, if I try to kill Ayara with an adventure creature like Rider, they could sacrifice it to the Strider, and then I wouldn't get access to the creature half. So maybe I'm gonna end up killing the Strider first here. And then I'll just bounce a Yara for now. And play the Brazen Borrow. So next turn we can ultimate Ashok. Right, there's a citadel I was talking about. And there's a head explosion. Alright. So mono black. How do we want to approach this matchup? Could bring in the Thief of Sanity, although it doesn't attack past their 4 4 flyer. Epic Downfall seems fine, but that's about it. This could maybe also get their enchantment creatures, but there's not too many of them. So I don't need to sideboard much, and probably just take out a Ritual of Soot. The Witch's Oven is definitely a problematic card for us to face, since they can play it before we can potentially get it with a discard spell or a counter spell. And it's difficult for us to remove artifacts once those hit the battlefield. Alright, not an exciting hand, but probably still a keep. Would rather have a 5 lander than a 2 lander in its deck. 
and uh, the temples can maybe help us dig towards some more answers. Knight of Abel Legion. Next turn we could Paddy Theft, or we could play another Temple. Right, there's Oven. The Oven also very good against our adventure creatures. Could of course try to bounce the Oven and counter it on the way back, using the Brazen Borrower. I think I'll keep an Ashok. And there's Ayara. Let's see what's on top first. Maybe it changes my play. Like if there's a Thought Erasure on top, I could maybe end of turn bounce often and then Thought Erasure it if it's a card I want to deal with. Murder Siders, okay. But again, suffers against often somewhat. So maybe I just want to dig towards like a Ritual of Soot here. So my guess is I'm probably going to bounce Ayara in response to the first creature my opponent casts. Or in response to an attack. And they're gonna pump the knight instead. So this shows all the respect for the Ritual of Suits that they uh, faced in the first game. So, yeah, I guess that's okay. Just uh, play land pass and maybe cast the Chemistry's Insights and then Turn 5 Ashiok, or I could Murder Strider. Although my opponent could have their own Murder Strider here for our Planeswalker this time, given that they're playing so passively. Second Oven is a bit redundant. And a Fenlurker is fine. Thought Erasure is good, so we'll exile a Watery Grave. And a uh, Sabotage is perfect. So we can clear a path for our Ashok here, maybe. Citadel, Ayara, Double Strider. Citadel is definitely the scariest card, but they're pretty far from casting it. So maybe I take Ayara. I can keep up Rider and Sabotage. Opponent plays Strider, so in response I could counter it or I could kill the Knight of Emma Legion. The Knight of Emma Legion is the only creature that really attacks past the 2 3 Nightmares. So I kind of like killing the Knight here. So I'll kill it in response before they can scry with the Wost Rider, even though they can still sack to the oven. So we don't get the creature half, since the spell fizzled. And I get to slam an Ashok. Now if they do find a Cauldron Familiar, we're going to be in trouble since they're going to start draining us a bunch with these ovens. Instead, Murder Strider off the top to deal with Ashok. Do have a backup that we can maybe protect a bit better with our Counterspell. 
could still play an Ashok now. But I wouldn't have Sabotage up. Might still be worth it. Since we know most of the contents of their hands. Nightmare Shepherd. So in response I could bounce the Fen Lurker so they can't use the Fen Lurker once the Shepherd hits play. Or I could just bounce the Shepherd, but then they will end up getting rid of my counterspell here, which I don't want. Or I guess I can just let it happen and then not use Petty Thefts until I untap, which is maybe better. Because yeah, if I petty theft now, I would lose my sabotage. But now I could petty theft and just exile the islands. And I think I just keep plussing with Ashok. So we're gonna make a food, make a fan lurker token. Excel lands. And they're gonna sack the Strider as well to make another go token here. Alright, but now the Nightmares can start attacking as well. And I do need to be somewhat aggressive. Because I don't want my opponent to find a Cauldron Familiar. Land 5, so the Citadel is also looming. But I have to counter this. And my opponent packs it in. Alright, next turn we could ultimate Ashok as well. After maybe exiling some more cards. So they've seen enough. Alright, so blue-black control featuring Ashok. Pretty fun control deck if you're uh, into that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, definitely pretty weak against some specific cards like the Witch's Oven like we mentioned here in the last game, but the Witch's Oven out of the Mono Black deck isn't as scary as it is out of the Junt Food deck, where there's more synergies with the food tokens as well. But uh, yeah, that's gonna wrap things up for today. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.